Andrew McCart, IFL TV. I'm here in Bolton with the big man himself, Nathan Gorman. Nathan, it's been what over a year since you've been out the ring, man. What's been going on? Yeah, twelve months, mate. It's been twelve months and a couple of days to be exact. Uh, nothing. Been to be fair, been in and out of the gym, had a few injuries and that, so it put me back a couple of months. But I, we're here now, and we were back, and hopefully, you know, get get this win out the road um, come Friday. It's a good opponent for me to come back because I could have come back and thought, you know. You know the game, Andrew. I could have fought someone who no one's heard of. Decent opponent. Looks very confident. Came over here last time. He's no stranger to coming over here and winning. You know, we come over here and beat Cashley and beat Cashley quite convincingly, in my opinion. So, we're here. Well, let's get the, the win Friday and move on. Well, that's what I was going to say to you. That's going to be my follow-up question, but you almost answered it there, that some people that come off with a loss to Fabio Wardley a year out the ring... They might want that easy opponent to get back off, knock off the cobwebs, the ring rust and whatnot, but you took somebody that I was at that fight against Cash Ali and he, he boxed brilliantly, this guy. He's, he's, he's tall, he's, he's long as well, so um, it's not an easy opponent for you for your comeback fight, so to speak, is it? Far from it, you know. Um, I got, listen, I got offered loads of opponents and I put him out of all them. I thought, you know what, people know of him, you know, around boxing and that, and if I put on a good performance and a good win, it's good for me to go on into the new year. And what, do, what have you seen in him from the Cash Ali fight? Because I'm guessing probably that's the only major footage you can get of somebody like him is the Cash Ali fight. So what have you seen in him? I can't even pronounce his name to be honest. He's a big Ukrainian kid. I, forgive me, it's Bayonets, Bay 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 that's right, yeah. And what have you seen in him that you can exploit? I think uh, with Cash, I think he just nullified Cash's work so Cash couldn't get his shots off. Obviously with me, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be more... I'll let my hands go a bit more with him. So it'll be interesting to see what he's like when he takes it. Because um, I swear we never saw it with him in his last one. And the people who he's fought before, I've fought a lot better people than him, let's be honest. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when I put the pressure on him. Um, he's a good boxer, you know, very slick, um, tall, like he said, that Eastern European way. So i got to be on my A game. Obviously, the heavyweight scene right now is, is thriving, and the fact that you've had a year out of the ring probably isn't good for your career right now, because right now this heavyweight, especially here in the UK, with the Fabio Wardleys, who you've faced, the David Adelaide's, you've got the Solomon Dakers coming through, you've got, God, I probably missed a good few names as well, but, you know, the, the heavyweight division is thriving here in the UK, and it, it seems like all of you can fight each other, whether it be for the British title or European, and when the Tysons, the Wilders, the Joshuas and the Usyks who are in the mid-30s, once they go... The space for one of you to come out and into the light and sort of take over the heavyweight division. I think, Andrew, I think just UK, never mind World Weight, it's probably the best it's ever been, the heavyweight division. Because let's be fair, we went for a dry, dry patch, didn't we, for about 10 years where there was nothing happening. You look now, just British level, there's that many good opponents. The British level now, 10 years ago, would be world champions. So this, this way, it's probably the best time as a heavyweight to be a part of it. So um, I think. Obviously, we make full concentrations Friday night first, but get that out of the way. I'd love another shot at the British. You know, Adelaide's lost to Wardley. I've lost to Wardley. Maybe we could do like a British eliminator or something, or British if Fabio moves on from, from what's happening. I've heard that he's fighting Fraser Clark or someone else, I'd imagine so. It's the winner of that. You know, me and Adelaide could fight the winner of them two. Nathan, what I would say is that you're not scared to have a dash you're not scared of any opponent like I said you took on Dubois who was knocking out every single person left right and centre you weren't scared to face him then obviously Fabio Wardley was doing the same you said yes I'll fight so you're not scared to fight these guys I'll, I'll put your name in the hat to, in the mix so you want to fight David Adley who am I going to question you because I know you're game for it without a doubt all they got to do mate listen is ring my phone done that's how it took, took about 24 hours to make the Wardley fight and the Dubois fight you know each time it's no, I'll do an art beat. So all that Frank's got to do, whoever looks after Adelaide, ring, ring, ring the manager, Mick, or ring me, whatever, and we'll do it. No problem. When you talked about the UK scene thriving, Fraser Clark looks like he probably will be Fabio Wardley in the new year, and you mentioned all the other guys, Solomon Dakers is a good fighter coming through as well. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah, you got big Nick Campbell, big country man of mine, big Scottish man. That I, I, hope, I, I hope he does well. I just can't see why they're not fighting each other. I'm all up for doing a little British Royal Rumble. Why not? It's so am I, so am I. It's good. It's good, isn't it, for us? Not just for us, but for people watching it, for the fans. Especially in the heavyweight division, it's the best best division, it's the glamour division. So why can't we not fight each other? They're all bothered about avoiding each other and they don't want to do that or, or just in case they get beat. Fuck that, let's just get it on. Listen, I hope... Every, well, I'm, I'm sure they all do, but you know yourself, boxing's probably our business before it's a sport. Exactly, mate. Every time. It's business first, isn't it? <laughs> Let's talk about the, the world level, because like I said, the, we're sport here in the UK, we're all used guys coming through and all that British level, but that world level, we've, we're seeing it now. 
we're starting to see Josh and Wilder, they're almost there. They're fighting on the same show, which is good. Now we're February 13th, I think it is, I can't remember the date, um, we're getting to see the big man himself, Tyson Fury, and Usyk get it on for the Undisputed. Wait 24 years for that Undisputed heavyweight title, we're getting it. So right now, you mentioned it's the glamour division. How excited are you as a boxing fan, not just a guy in the division, but as a boxing fan, to see these fights being made and almost being made? It's very good, mate. You know, like you said, 24 years since a fight like this has ever happened. It's probably the biggest fight, well, it is the biggest fight worldwide at this present moment. A very, very good fight as well. A fight where I'm more than confident of Tyson winning. I think he's too big, too strong. I think it was just people obviously, every time I, they ask me this question and they go, oh, what about him with Nangano? I think Nangano was a bit of an off night at the office of Tyson. I don't think he took it 100%. I could be wrong, but on the other hand, Nangano was 20 stone man or something. Not a house of fact, him, what can punch whatever speed I escort van can go at you. That's, that's going to hurt when it hits you. So I think he'd be too big, too strong, just too good for Usyk. I really do. I, I think he'll just lean on him, bully him. I think he stops him under eight. I could be wrong, but I, I doubt it. I think Tyson's got a bee in his bonnet, especially with what's happened in Saudi. I think he'd be training like a demon. I think he'll have a bee in his bonnet, and I think he'll go over, go over back over to Saudi and just take all the belts back home. And I said, I can't wait for it. I'm lucky enough to be in, I'm lucky enough to be in uh, Saudi for December 23. You've got, you got Joshua and Wallen, you've got Joseph Parker, and you've got Deontay Wilder, you've got Lebois and Jarrell Miller, you've got Hergovic, you've got all these great heavyweights out there that's fighting it, man. When are we going to see Big Nathan Gorman out in the, the kingdom having a scrap? Sort it out for me. Sort it out for me. I'll fight any of them. Sort it out for me, Andy. <laughs> I've got no pulling power, Nathan. You've got more power than me, but so you better start calling people out. Like I said, just, just phone me. I'm there. Not a problem. Not talk, to about, but talk to me about the, the two heavyweight fights at the top there, uh, Joshua and Wallen. First of all, two parts to this question. It's a tough fight for Joshua and Otto Wallen. Tough, tough fight. And do you think that this, the fact that he's moved with Ben Davison with that six-week period, is that enough time to gel with the coach to get into a fight of this magnitude? Yeah, I'd imagine so. Should be. Um, Wallen, uh, there's positives. Like this. Ben's been in the opposite corner with Wallen before and with Tyson. So I imagine he would know. He's already had the experience, What you know what I mean, fighting with um, Wallen. So he's already had a camp with Wallen behind him. So I think six weeks, yeah, I think he'll change him. What he'll do, I don't know, but it'll be interesting. Wilder and Joseph Parker. I mean, he's, Joseph trains with Tyson Fury as well. And the thing is with Joseph that he's got somebody in his camp that's beaten jo Wilder three times, if you want to call it three times, because the first fight, right? But obviously Tyson's tactics were to be bit the bigger man in there. Joseph's the little man in there, the weird man in there. So how, does, how, do, you, how do you feel like Joseph Parker's going to do in this fight against somebody that hits as hard as Wilder? I'm backing Parker to win, I am. You know, everyone keeps saying to me, I think, I could, I could be wrong again, <laughs> I think all them three fights of Tyson's took it out a while though, but there's only one problem. He's got the, the finishing punch in he. You could be beating Deontay Wilder for 11 and a half rounds and he just go bang. And it's all over, then Sayonara in it. Because that's the, well, yeah, I suppose that's the heavyweight division. But it's just one punch and you can't recover, man. I don't care who you are. The minute you get clapped properly by these heavyweights, it's all, all over. Um, but I'm going to back Parker to him. I think he's going to use his movement, his sharp counters, I think. So I'm going to back Parker to win on points. Back to you though, you need, you need a big fight, you need a big win. You've got it here live on Channel 5. You need, do you need to make a statement to say, listen, I'm not going anywhere to this heavyweight division? Because right, like you, we've spoke about there, the heavyweight division in the UK is thriving. So you, do you need a big, big performance on Friday night to let everybody know that Nathan Gorman's still here, I ain't going anywhere? Yeah, definitely. Listen, I'd love to go out there and knock him out in the first 30 seconds, wouldn't I? But I'm just going to go out there and just do my thing. You know, let me box and do do what does. And if it comes, it comes. It doesn't, doesn't. But I'm going to try and get him out if I can. That's hopefully what I'm going to try and do. But we'll just see what happens. Absolute pleasure to speak to you, big man. I'll catch you the way in tomorrow. And I'll catch you fighting as well. Thanks, big man. Thanks.